Okay, guys, Adam L. from Full House Outfitters here again, coming with you, uh, coming to you with another video. This one is a little different. Doesn't include guns. Um, this is a double blaze bar uh, survival paracord bracelet. Now, there's a couple of different ways. Well, there's millions of different ways and millions of variations on the theme to make paracord bracelets, but not all of them will quick deploy um, in an instance where you actually need the cord. Now, for instance, this one right here, this is 19 feet of paracord, and it's one piece. So if you ever had to, uh, you know, you, you were in a survival situation and you had need for a cord, uh, this deploys very easily. Basically, all you do is take this uh, bracket off here, and we'll go into that in a little bit, and this whole thing just unthreads by itself. Okay, now you may have seen quick deploy uh, single blaze bar bracelets and other videos that de deploy in two seconds. You can unravel the whole thing. Um, well, the whole, whole point of me developing this weave was because I wanted something, I wanted to carry more paracord. Um, I like bracelets that are thick and flat. Those are my two criteria. As you see at Edge On, this is not very big. Um, I can't stand stuff that like sticks out and it's really bulky and so forth, but I like the the uh, the wide two and a half inch look. I have a black one that looks like a, a truck tire, but uh, it's pretty cool. So anyway, um, stainless steel shackle and this bracket, which is actually the adjustment piece for uh, for the shackle itself, um, I repurposed as a decorative item towards the end. So anyway, let's get into it. I'll show you how to make one. All right, now guys, this is probably going to be a little longer than my usual vids because as mentioned previously, uh, I don't know anything about video editing, so um, we're just going to do the best we can. So anyway, feel free at any point to, uh, you know, fast forward through through the video, and uh, it's not going to hurt my feelings at all if you do, because I'm not going to know. Okay, anyway, what I have here is, and I'm going to do it in two pieces, just so you see here. Um, I have uh, two pieces of paracord, a red and a white, uh, connected with what is commonly referred to as the Manny method and uh, I have like I said 10 feet a piece and I thought two colors would show up better on camera than uh, than just one and maybe you'd have a better idea of what I was doing um, if I used two colors okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use a, um, a stock standard uh, stainless shackle made by type 3 you can get these on Amazon and they have this like I said this piece here which allows you to make your bracelet adjustable. I don't like adjustable bracelets. If I'm making a bracelet, I'm going to make it for me, and I know what size it's going to be ahead of time. So, as mentioned, I repurpose this as a, uh, a detail to use at the end. So, uh, first things first, we're going to uh, put the uh, screw pin back in the shackle, and we're going to get started. Okay, now one thing I want to mention at the outset that I think is fairly important is that you don't need any kind of uh, you know weird uh, jigs or anything else to make this particular weave. In fact, it's probably best that you don't have anything weird because um, this requires a lot of messing around and to accomplish correctly. And if you had to use the uh, the weaving needles, the fids that I use, it would take you a month to get a bracelet done like this. So um, let's show this to you first. Um, the uh, standard blaze bar is, is something that you can't do and have a quick deploy with a conventional clasp. It's got to be a shackle um, so you can, you can actually take all the cordage off the end. So um, this is, in my opinion, the mother of all survival bracelets. So let's get started. Here's what we do first. Uh, first things first, do ourselves a little cow's hitch like so with the two color okay and this becomes our center knot um, but I like to do this in such a way that um, when we start the weave you can't see the um, the joint we want to have that hidden okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one of these and we'll do a cow's hitch in this case it's gonna be red and I'm gonna you can see I'm gonna hide the uh, hide our joint down here. So why red and white you ask? Well the uh, the colors of Worcester Polytech Institute where my son is going to be attending school um, are red and white. So I figured I might as well do a, an 
homage to Worcester Polytech. Plus, he'll get to school, he'll wear these, and then all the kids will have to have one, and then a new cottage industry will be born for me, and I'll make millions. At least that's how I have it drawn up. Okay. All right, so there's your cow's hitch, and we have white on the left and red on the right. It does not matter which color goes on which side. Okay. Now what we're going to do is two more cow's hitches, one on each side of this original one. Now this is, this is uh, the tricky part. This is probably the single hardest paracord bracelet to get started. But once you get started, it's not that difficult. This is what a single blaze bar looks like in two color. Looks kind of cool, I think. But like I said, I wanted something a little bit wider. And so I modified this braid to make the double. Um, so, I mean, it was just, didn't take a rocket scientist, but it does take more work and more cordage. All right, so getting back to this. All right, so we're going to um, go back over the top with our white. This might actually be easier if I take it off and show you this, okay? And then we're going to run a white over the top. In other words, we can't make a uh, cow's hitch and slip it on, so we kind of have to make it in place. So I'll come around the back of the shackle and then down the front this way. All right, so for instance, all right, so then there's your white one. All right, and then the red, um, I actually can do in place. So we're going to do one of these. Hello. Like so, and then just slide it on here. Now, this is the important part of the weave is the start, because all of our working parts um, have to be the same length, or your your um, bracelet just simply isn't going to work out in the end. Okay, so we have two loops here that are different sizes, obviously, because I haven't fine-tuned them yet. Uh, now it's at this point that I'll put the pin back in the shackle just so our um, our pieces of paracord don't take off on us, okay? Now, first and foremost, I measure, I measure from the shackle to the loop, and I look for about, from, from my wrist, about 8 and 3 eighths inch, okay? Um, this one is a teeny bit long, so once you get uh, it's worth mentioning that once you get the first loop set up to the length you want, you don't have to measure anymore. You're done. All right, so like I said, this and this will all snug up and, and look beautiful. But like I said, it's important to get these lengths nailed down first. Now, don't worry. I mean, I like my bracelets a little on the snug side. Uh, opinions differ. I also find that um, just wearing the paracord bracelet um, it, it tends to stretch out a teeny bit. All right, so um, so what I'm going to do now is, and please bear with me, I'm not the best instructor on planet Earth, but um, and like I said, all we're doing is snugging these these hitches up until these two loops are precisely the same size. And this needs to go a little bit more. And like I said, the, it's it's. This, this preparation that is what makes the, uh, the weave look great, but it is a little bit time consuming at the beginning. So, like I said, you got to be patient. This, this weave is not for the anxious types. So, all right, that red is still a little long. So, I'm going to just give it a little, oops, wrong way. A little bit more of a tug. All right, I'm going to call those pretty much even, and then we'll, uh, like I said, we'll snug, snug all of this down and get ourselves underway. So we get these tight, and you'll see what I mean in a second why this is so difficult to do. Um, it's because not only do I have these two loops, man, I'm going to make two more. And uh, I'm sorry, let me keep my hands out here where you can see a little bit better. My apologies. Um, so anyway, there's your start. All right, you got your two, two colors, your, uh, your three cow's hitches, 
and um, now we're going to go from there. Let me just check one thing real quick. Make sure hopefully you can see this. I'm going to just zoom in a teeny bit here and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this a little bit. I'm not the best videographer either. Those of you who subscribe to my channel already know that. So we'll get this, get our backboard back up where it should be and we'll get the weave going. All right. So now we have our two loops as mentioned. All right. But now we're going to do two more. Okay. And the way we do that is we're going to take the white, flip it up. And we're going to take the red and flip it up. Now the trick is you've got to hold them all in one hand. And as mentioned, they all have to be the same length. This is what makes it hard. This is why I think nobody has, uh, has done this weave on YouTube before. So, because it is a royal pain in the ass to get started. But like I said, it's worth it once you get going. And there will be an opportunity to fine tune these lengths when the time comes. And, okay, so now we've got our four loops. Now I know this looks like a complete mess, but bear with me, it won't look like a complete mess for long. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do as I'm trying to hold all eight of these pieces, is we're going to take this left hand, uh, well, my left, as I'm looking at it anyway. We're going to take the red and flip it over, go right over the top, and then right back underneath again. All right, and still we're trying to keep our stuff together, so to speak, okay? And uh, this re represents our starting point here. Now, I'm going to take the red, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a loop, okay? And... Um, and that's where we're going to start. So this is my left hand, and I have the red. Now, what you have to remember, there's a couple of phrases that will help you remember, because you have to alternate on this weave. You have to start with the right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. If you don't, the weave won't come out right, and you'll have to back up and, and work on it again. All right, so anyway, the first one, leftovers. Leftovers are what you have in your house after you go out for Chinese food. Remember leftovers. The left always goes over. All right, now we have four loops here, okay? So our left is going to go over the first loop, okay? It's going to go under the second loop, over the third loop, and under the fourth loop, okay? I'm going to try to show that to you the best I can here, all right? So if I flatten this out, you'll see it, okay? Just like that. And we are going to do another big snug when I'm done with this, okay? All right, so remember, leftovers, okay? So what we do on the left, we do on the right, okay? So now I get the white on the right. Remember, I went left over, so I'm going to do right over, okay? Over, under, over, and under that fourth loop, okay? And here's how we start the weave. See this little loop I left over here? I want to come up through it. That is our first hitch right there, okay? Now, the trick, of course, is to snug everything down very carefully, make sure all our loop lengths are correct, and snug this up to the top. All right? And take your time with this, because you only get one crack at it, literally. All right, so one shot, and that's it. And it's got to look right. I mean, there are some adjustment possibilities a little bit later on but not many because once you start snugging this up okay you know we're going to be on the fly here in short order okay all right i'm going to just give that white a little bit more of a bite okay again this doesn't look like a whole lot yet all right but the good news is that all our loops are the same i'm going to i'm checking them again just to make sure and our red on this side is still a little bit long, okay? So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm just, again, I'm just going to shorten it up a teeny bit, pull it around back, and then snug it across just to make absolutely sure that everything we do from here on out 
is going to look right. Because if you don't, it, it, it sounds silly, but it's absolutely true that everything we do here at the beginning defines how the bracelet looks when we're done. That's why it's so important to get these parts right. Okay, all right, now we've got, here we go, four loops. They're all flat. The reds are on, the, on my left and the whites are on the right. And you'll recall that we started with the left side on that weave. Okay, so now we're going to switch over to the right. Okay, and what you need to do on the right is remember right up. Hey, man, what's the deal with you? Oh, I'll be right up. Okay, there's your right. It's red and it's coming up from below. Okay, so the red goes up and under the first loop, over, under, over. Okay. All right, same thing. Okay, we take the white on the left, okay, and that goes up and under too. So up, over, under, over, and down through that loop. Okay, now again, this doesn't look like much, but as you carefully snug it up, you're going to see the pattern ever so slowly start to develop. And we'll just give this a good snuggie and we'll try to keep this flat like so. Okay. All right, everything still looks good. All right, now we're going to do a left over again. Okay. So left goes over, under, over, under. Run that through and go back to the white side and the same thing. We go over, under, over, under, and then up through this loop. And again, as always, make sure everything is flat. You don't want anything to get twisted. Snug it all up. Okay, so far so good. Now, I've never done one of these two color ones before, so I'm interested to see what it's actually going to look like on a double. Okay, so again, right up. All right, so this is coming up from the bottom, so we know we go, it, we're due to start on this one. All right, so we go under, over, under, over, and across. Okay, we've left our loop, as always. Okay, and then we take the white, and we go over the standing part, and we go under, over, under, over and down through the loop. Okay, make sure everything's flat before you go snugging everything up, and give it a quick push, and then just, okay, everything snugs up carefully as we go, and this is starting to look good already. Okay, like I said, I didn't know what this would look like using two colors, but I like it so far. Okay, and uh, in this case, the right is down, so we know we don't start over the here. We start with the left. All right, leftovers. Left over, under, over, and under. Flip it out of the way. Okay, and then same thing. Grab the right side, which is white, and it's going to be over, under, over and under and up through. Okay, you can probably imagine how many inconvenient weeks it would take you to make this bracelet, all right, if you had to use, you know, one of these lacing fids and go down and up and down and up if you had a jig. Not even worth the effort, you know what I mean? So, this is what we have. Now I can't remember, was will we go into the left or right this time? Up, right up, so we know that. Okay, starting with the right. Under, over, under, over. Okay. Take the left, the white part, go over your standing part, and go under, over, under, and over, and down through. 
again, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this leave the uh, camera running, but um, you guys can speed ahead if you want as I uh, as I do the rest of this because it's pretty much gonna be me talking to myself. But again, just make sure everything is snug, everything stays flat. Flat is a biggie too. Okay, but I like the color combination. You can see our loops are all the same size, so that's working out fine. So, all right, same thing. Uh, right is down, so we don't want to do that. Left, left over, under, over, under. Okay, grab the right, same thing. Over, under, over, under, and up through. And like I said, this is, um, I call this the mother of all paracord bracelets, of all survival bracelets, because of, well, two things. First of all, the amount of cordage you can carry. Like I said, for an 8 and 3 8 bracelet, um, it's about 19 feet. That's a hell of a lot of cordage to have on one hand. And um, I like it just because it looks cool. And so that's, like I said, I, I just wanted a, a, I wanted a braid that was wide, and flat and there wasn't one out there that I liked so I just used the regular blaze bar and uh, and and added to it essentially so the reason I came up with this because nobody else had and I wanted I wanted a nice big chunky bracelet okay right up okay so here we go under over under and over okay everything's flat everything's the way it should be okay and we go to the white over here, and it's going to be under, over, under, and then over and down through. Okay, make sure everything's flat, and just progressively snug it up, and very gently, you know, we don't need to yank here, all right, very gently just snug everything up so it's comfortable. Okay. And left, over, under, over, under. And it looks okay. All right. The right side is going to be over a loop, under, over, under, and up. Okay. Now, the beauty of this weave also is if, if you start to look at your at the weave itself and you realize that you've made a mistake it's easy to just unravel it and then like I said as long as you can remember that your left always starts going over and your right always starts going under not a big deal and remember your remembering your order in which to start remember right up okay that means um, this is the one you start with so even if you can't remember even if you take a break and go away and come back to this if your right is up that's the one you start with. If the right is down, start with the left side. Oh, right up. Okay. So you're going to go under, over, under, and over. And the left side goes under, over, under, over. And like I said, you just check your weave, make sure everything stays flat, and that it looks like the way it's supposed to. If it doesn't, just backtrack. It only takes a minute, you know, and like I said, I've never done a two-color double blaze bar, but this looks cool. I, li I like the color combination. I might try this with some others. It looks neat. Okay, right is down, so we don't want to do that. So left. Leftovers. Over, under, over, and under. And the right side, same thing. Over, under, over. Under and up. Flat, snug. And I'll show you how, like I said, if, if you're still with me and you haven't fast forwarded, um, I'll show you how we're going to end this. It's, it's a pretty good, cool detail. And um, it's what makes a, a quick deploy bracelet quick deployable. Now this, because of the amount of friction on these four loops, you can't grab this and deploy the whole thing like you can with a single blaze bar. Um, but you can do it in probably, I don't know, 20 seconds. You just do it a little at a time. Not a big deal. Oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, right up. So that's where we start. Under, over, under, over. Grab our left. Same thing. Oops, sorry. Under, 
over, under, over and down through. Okay, again, make sure everything's flat. I mean, and just just tend to it and make sure it's not flat. And there's the other thing we want to avoid is um, is any kind of variation in the width. So we want this to be obviously here it's small because it starts and then it comes out and gets wide and you want to maintain this width all the way to the end. Uh, where was I? Oh, right down. We don't want that. Left over. Over. Under. Over. And under. Like I said, this weave is really quick. Thank God we don't have a jig. All right. Same thing. Over. Under. Over. Under and up through our loop. Now the reason we this will quick deploy, you notice we're going over and under the loops, but at no time do we go through them. If you go through one of these loops, it's game over. Your bracelet will not deploy like it's supposed to. And the one thing you don't want to be doing, and I saw another guy on uh, YouTube doing it, untying a paracord bracelet um, when you're most likely to need it and taking four minutes to undo each loop. It defeats the purpose of having a survival bracelet, which is why some paracord bracelets are just paracord bracelets and others are true survival bracelets. Like I said, this would be considered a true survival bracelet. You could do it in one single piece of paracord. Like I said, it would be probably be about 19 feet of, of paracord. I did two tens here. Same thing if I got to knot them together to make my 20 feet. Eh, no biggie. All right, right up. We start with this one. Under, over, under, and over. Under, over, under, over and down. Now, obviously, the more paracord you use up, the quicker and easier this weave becomes. I'm sure you probably figured that out, too. Okay, now, you can adorn these. I mean, I've seen guys do survival bracelets, and they've got compasses, and they've got fire starters, and they've got all this and, and a bag of chips adorning their survival bracelet. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's that's all well and good. It's just not not my cup of tea. Um, for me, the whole point of a survival bracelet is to have cordage with you. Um, so whatever you need to do with your 550, and always make sure you're using 550 paracord. Don't use Bob's paracord that's, you know, rated for nothing. Use good stuff. Um, and even the good stuff is still pretty damn cheap, and it comes in a billion colors, so it's not a big deal. But um, obviously, they're your bracelets. You can set them up any way you want. I just choose not to, you know, put anything else on here other than cordage and that decorative bracket at the end. Now, I'm probably going to do a video coming up um, about uh, an, an my everyday carry stuff. And one of the things I've noticed about everyday carry um, survival kits and tins and things of that nature, everybody advocates... You know, well, you should you should pack some uh, pack some some cordage with you. Well, why not just carry the twenty feet on your wrist? You know, these things are stupidly cheap to make if you know how to do them, obviously. You know, and you can carry hey accessorize with it. I mean, can you think of a, a tougher, more manly, you know, fashion accessory than five hundred and fifty pound test cordage? Absolutely not. Um, so I got these to you know I have them all. Um, color-coded to my uh, my work shirts and my golf shirts and stuff like that. So anytime I'm heading out the door, I have paracord with me, plain and simple. I know that sounds like a goofy thing to do, but is it any more goofy than, uh, you know, some lame-o $1,000 bracelet you get at the jewelry store, you know, that's adorned with, you know, soccer balls and your kids' activities and whatnot? You tell me which is more useful. You know what I mean? So, like I said, this is it's guy stuff. Um... That wasn't meant to be sexist, but it's just, you know, guys aren't generally jewelry types. So if you want to accessorize, may I suggest 550 paracord? So like I said, we'll just keep going here. And um, I'm maintaining the weave, obviously. But we're getting to the, getting close to the end here. So we're going to have to, it's... You want to make sure that you end this precisely when you want to. So you don't have any... Uh, you know, big 
gaps or spaces or anything like that. You want to make sure that you know we get to the end. Now the other thing, of course, is with the um, with the shackle. You want to be able to make sure that you can put it put the shackle pin if you put the shackle through these loops, which is what needs to happen, and you can get the pin on. So a lot of that has to do with. Um, I'm just going to move this a little bit. I sure hope you can still see because, I, I, like I said, I'm shooting this from my, my phone. I'm not a decent camera, as usual. All right, over, under, over and under. Okay, and we are running out of cord, so over, under, over, up and through. and we are getting there we are absolutely getting towards the end of the line here so oop, right up okay so we start with the right side under over under and over under over under over and down through everything's flat everything is a uniform width and we keep snugging Snug it away. Now, one thing I like about these Type 3 sh shackles, Type 3 brand, you can just look up Type 3 on Amazon. Um, they come in uh, black, uh, like a bright stainless, and it's almost like a gunmetal sort of gray color, which is kind of cool. I'm just using black just because, but um, there are a lot of options out there. So, but you, like I said, you got to use a shackle because if, I, like I said before, if anything goes through these loops, while you're weaving it will not deploy now you can make them like that if you like this weave and you just like the way how it looks um, you can certainly do a regular conventional um, buckle but like I said it won't it won't quick deploy in which case in my opinion anyway it's not a true survival bracelet it's not going to be a survival bracelet unless you can get to the cordage okay all right right up so we'll go under, over, under, over. And you can see we're running out of uh, real estate for our loops here. Which is okay. We knew that was coming. Okay, same thing. Still flat. Still snug. And it still looks good. I really do like this. Um, you, you recall if when I did the single blaze bar, it was just like a mirror image of each other. Which is cool, but you can see that the you have much more color variation. Um, like I said, I've never done a double blaze bar with two colors, so I, I like I like the way this is this is shaping up here. It looks cool. Now I think I've got enough room. This is a completed stitch. 